if I saw that I had throughout the entire dynamic range this thing failing, what do you think? Let's say I was adding fuel throughout the entire dynamic range. What do you, so it's sensing a lean condition. Where would I go in my diagnostic procedure? What kind, what is the most likely problem? It's lean throughout the entire engine operation. Volume of fuel, Volume of fuel or fuel pressure, so spot on, you know. Hats off to you, you got it right. So if I see that, I know, hey, when I get out, I know it's a fuel related problem because I can see it's trying to add, this is actually a bad example because this one's subtracting two, but if it was positive 10 or higher, I see it's, it's lean throughout the entire range, right? Now, if I saw that it was mostly, I turned the key off, but if I saw that it was mostly lean at the bottom part of the scale, well, that's gonna tell me it's not gonna be a weak fuel pump because obviously at higher RPMs, everything goes away. So I'd have to ask myself, well, what's causing this to be lean at idle? So what do you guys think I would be looking for? A vacuum leak. A vacuum leak. Dude, come on up here. You're doing the class, man. <laughs> I, don't need to, I don't need to be here. All right, so I'd be looking for a vacuum leak. But what happens if it's good at the lower end of the scale and it's good at the higher end of the scale, but in the middle part of the scale, it's way off. What could that be an indication of? This is the hard question. If you answer it, you're definitely teaching the rest of the class. If I have a skewed mass airflow sensor or a MAP sensor, so a skewed load sensor, because that's what fuel trim's basing its readings off of, that is why it's out of range in the middle part of the scale. So it could be because there's a whole bunch of carbon on a hot wire. It could be because the sensor itself has just failed. It hasn't failed to the point where it's going to set a code, but it's failed. And if you think about it, those are the hardest ones for us to diagnose because it seems to idle okay. And if I floor it, it seems to be responsive and doing everything. But the fuel economy sucks on this thing. Um, I got mid-range drivability things where maybe it's surging and stuff. And you got all this problem because that mass airflow sensor is not fueling the engine correctly. So I know this by just looking at fuel trim. Now this is nice because it gives you a graphic picture, which is why I chose to use this tool when I'm trying to explain this because it's very easy to see. Now <clears throat> you can do the same thing with your individual scan tool. Like, this scan tool doesn't display it the same way as that one. This is going to give me a traditional fuel trim value. Now, short term, I know a lot of instructors have would tell you, well, you got short term and long term, and short term are, you know, are, are short term fuel corrections, but long term is more important. Short term is used for finding vacuum leaks, where long term is used for finding, you know, other type of problems. And that's all true, but where I have a problem or a difference of opinion, I should say, with what some of the instructors say is, they say, well, let's say that we're on the generic side and it goes from zero to 25, right? On some factory sides, it might go higher, but whatever. So if I got, you know, positive 25 fuel trim value, I'm actually trying to compensate for a lean condition. Everybody knows that already. But <clears throat> what, they're, what I kind of differ with is when they come to the short term, they say, well, normal operating range is anywhere from about zero to nine or 10, right? Short term should be zero, should always be zero unless you're accelerating the car. Because if you think about fuel trim, the way how short term works is it's the first one that starts making changes and it goes from zero to, you know, positive three, positive five. But when it gets to about positive seven, it gets reset because it changes long term to say positive two. So now it can reset and it just keeps doing that over and over again until eventually, let's say I had a bad fuel pump, you know, positive is maxed out plus, plus short term is maxed or Yeah, short term is maxed out. So long term and short term are both maxed out. So if, it, if, if fuel trim, short term fuel trim is not reading zero, well then I'm looking for a pirate leak. So if it's a map sensor, it's gonna affect the vacuum. If it's a mass airflow sensor, maybe the snorkel tube's cracked or whatever. I mean, I'm not telling you guys anything new with that. So this is why I like to use fuel trim for this.